On tonight's episode, find out the winner of this year's Pulitzer Prize for Music. Learn what's been happening with KBVR's own Trey Kenyon. And a behind the scenes look at the Nautic's new music video. <laughs> Welcome to Music Fusion Fridays here on KBVR. I'm Maya Holmes. And I'm Brittany Wooten. And, and we're, we're the Blonde, Blonde Bombshells. Bombshells. Here to give you your weekly music news. Ever wonder what happens when there's a change in the chemistry of a small ensemble that works so hard to make great music? Well, Portland Center Stage's performance of the play Opus will give you a chance to find out. According to James Bash of Oregon Music News, Opus delves into the relationships within a string quartet after one of its members has been forced out. The show, which was written by Michael Hollinger, opened last Friday and was performed by the members of the Portland Center Stage at the Armory. The play includes well-paced vignettes, romantic relationships, impressive auditions, and family problems that gather themes of artistry, ego, amore, and health issues into one gigantic snowball of intensity. Director Brendan Fox keeps each character well-defined and focuses the action so that it is constantly gaining momentum right up through the finale. Opus runs through May 8th, and it definitely sounds like it's worth seeing, whether you love the theater, chamber music, or just a great story. In the face of national decline, at least one local organization is fighting to stabilize regional arts funding. The Creative Advocacy Network is a nonprofit established to mobilize the Portland metro region in support of a new public fund for the arts. According to Brandon Ellison of Oregon Music News, CAN's goal is to inspire kids and keep them in school, create jobs and fuel the economy, as well as open minds and celebrate culture. Beginning in 2008, 1,500 leaders in the creative arts were brought in to develop a creative action plan for the Portland metro area, also known as the Act for Art. The goal was to secure 15 to 20 million dollars in annual funding for the arts in the Portland metro region. They're taking their first steps in Portland, and by the end of 2012, CAN hopes to bring a new, stable, and dedicated funding stream for the Arts of Portland. If you'd like to learn more or help out with the program, visit theartscan.org. Yuck is hopefully the last word that comes to mind when you hear the British band of the same name masterfully revisit the familiar indie rock sounds of the late 80s and early 90s. According to Ned Lanavan of the Portland Mercury, Yuck's self-titled album was recently released on February 21st of this year, and the revival of familiar sounds that can be heard on their album, it turns out, was not a planned design. According to guitarist Max Bloom, it just kind of happened as they recorded their tracks and received inspiration from the bands that they discovered from the recent past along the way. Bloom founded Yuck with singer-guitarist Daniel Bloomberg after they both departed the London five-piece band Cajun Dance Party. After the two recorded some initial demos, they rounded out the new band with bassist Mariko Doi, whom they met in London, and drummer Johnny Rogoff, whom they met in Israel by chance when he was there vacationing. And although for some of the band members this is not their first professional band, all of them are only 21 years old, or almost in Bloom's case. Currently, Yuck is touring the U.S., and they stopped by the Wonder Ballroom this past Wednesday to show Oregon what they're all about. If you miss them, be sure to check them out as they continue to rock on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. Where does Dave Grohl look when he wants the best music video? Why, Portland, of course. Local director Daniel Fickle of Two Penguin Productions has been chosen to create a video for a song off Foo Fighters' new album, Wasting Light, which was released earlier this month. He was selected as part of the band's This Video Sucks fan contest, which sought directors for each of the record's 11 tracks. Fickle was given the song I Should Have Known, which has gotten some pre-release attention for being a pseudo Nirvana reunion. According to Matthew Singer of Willamette Week, Two Penguin says the video depicts the relationship between Leroy, an inchworm puppet, and his wife as they explore themes of metamorphosis, politics and corruption, lost love, and limousines. It premiered April 15th on Fuse, and according to the company's project manager, James Strayer, Dave Grohl loves it and says it reminds him of M Michelle Gondry, which is pretty high praise considering Gondry directed Everlong, still the Fuse's most memorable video 14 years later. Our correspondent Sierra Lever was at Bombs Away this past week. Let's check out what she found. Hey guys!
guys, I'm Sierra here at Bombs Away Cafe in Corvallis. I'm here to check out some performances only on Bombshells Hit the Road. So I'm here with solo artist Renfield. So Renfield, um, when did your where did your name come from? Like where did it originate? Uh, it comes from the Bram Stoker's Dracula. He's a character who's kind of enslaved by Dracula, but wants to do good. And so he's kind of a, you know, he's a dynamic character. He's not just good or bad. Oh, okay, that's that's interesting. Well, um, when did you start um, doing music? Uh, well, I started doing music when I was 14, but I started doing Renfield about two years ago. So what um, genre of music is it? Um, it's a lot of things. It's mostly uh, kind of down-tempo electronica, mostly instrumental, some vocals. So who has been major influences on this? Um, uh, Radiohead, Aphex Twin, um, The Orb, um, Mice Parade, Dosh. They're all kind of obscure musicians, but they're people that I really respect and love. That's nice. Um, so where do you plan to go with your music? Um, I plan to, you know, I mean, the idea would be to make a living doing it, but um, I don't plan to, like, make it big or anything. Pop ra it's not really pop radio type of music, but <laughs> it's more experimental, so. So you're doing it because you love because doing it. Because I love it. doing it, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so what challenges have you had so far? I'd say the biggest thing is all the equipment I have to lug around. Oh yeah, that that could be challenging. Uh -huh. So, um, are there is there a way that people can listen to your music online? Yeah, uh, I have a it's a SoundCloud page, so it's soundcloud.com backslash Renfield PDX. PDX stands for Portland because I'm from Portland. Okay, I'm from Portland too. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So everybody out there, go ahead and check him out online and follow him. Um, you know, that's all the questions I have for you tonight. I'm excited to see you play at um, Bombs Away Cafe. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Hope to see you next week. Now back to the ladies in the studio. Sierra, let's get back to more music news. This weekend, Eugene will be in for quite the musical treat, with Dark 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 and Ila Bamba playing together for two shows, one at Mississippi Studios tonight and also at Sam Bond's Garage on Saturday night. It seems fitting that the two groups will be sharing the stage because they both give up vibes that are, according to Katie M. Shaw of Oregon Music News, a mix of psych folk, avant folk, chamber folk, and art folk. Ila Bamba's 2010 debut album entitled Le Pon was influenced by lead singer Luz Elena Mendoza's cultural heritage and beautifully blurred the combinations of American folk and traditional Mexican musical elements together. Next up, the group has an East Coast tour supporting Neko Case and is also setting aside time to record the follow-up to Le Pon with producer Steve Berlin. Dark 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 began as a duo that mixed New Orleans jazz, Americana, Eastern European folk, and pop stylings. And with the recent album release of Wild Go, already has two albums under their belt. Lead vocals are sung by Nana Marie Envy, who is accompanied by the accordion, banjo, and the piano. Tonight's Mississippi Studio show starts at 9 p.m. and Saturday's Sam Bond's Garage show starts at 9.30 p.m. As if you needed any more incentive to go, the band Why Are We Building Such a Large Ship will be opening both shows. So what are you waiting for? If you ever grew up out in the middle of nowhere, you might have an understanding of how hard it is to acquire a music education. That's where Ethos Rural Music Program comes into play. Ethos, a Portland-based nonprofit music organization, has offered several ways to bring affordable music education to rural areas across Oregon. According to James Bash of Oregon Music News, the program operates in five sites. Long Creek, Monument, Condon, Fossil, and Elkton. In all of the schools, the instructors teach general music during the day, which offer units such as guitar, classical, audio recording, and African drumming. Some teachers even have specialties like brass or woodwinds. Currently, there are 324 students in the program and counting. 
Due to its major success, Ethos is in the process of finalizing a grant to be the first music program in the country to become an AmeriCorps site. One student who recently went through the program just got accepted to the Berklee College of Music in Boston. Ethos hopes to make these success stories a regular outcome of their program. If you would like to help out the cause, you can donate instruments at the Ethos headquarters in Portland and Northeast Killingsworth and Williams. Trey Kenyon, a freshman biology major at Oregon State and a familiar face around our KBVR TV studios, is not only a man of many talents, but also one of charity, as shown last Saturday when he sang at Hungry for Talent, a talent contest at the Boys and Girls Club of Albany. According to Graham Kislingbury of the Gazette Times, Kenyon was the first one to sign up for the contest, which donated all its proceeds to the Lynn Benton Food Share. Trey was a presence at OSU even before he came here in the fall to attend school. Currently, he has sung the national anthem 32 times at various OSU sporting events, including a 2002 performance observing the one-year anniversary of 9-11 before an OSU football game at Reeser Stadium. In middle school, he learned how to play the guitar, bass, piano, and drums, and in 2006, he played the drums and later the guitar in a band headed by country singer Alexis Ebert of Albany. He also started helping and learning from the other DJs while in 8th grade at Memorial Middle School. Now, not only does he sing solo and in a techno-pop vocal trio called Little Rascals with his best friends from high school, he also runs his year-old business, Premier Sounds and DJ Services. Most of his weekends are booked with events, including the Philomath High School Prom. Trey is also writing and arranging his own music, in addition to writing and recording songs with Little Rascals, who are halfway done with mixing a new album. Be on the lookout for this talented young man. I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of him in his next few years at OSU. Grammy Award winning vocalist Bobby McFerrin will team up with the long running jazz group The Yellow Jackets to headline this year's Da Vinci Days Festival in July. According to Mike McAnally of the Gazette Times, McFerrin and the Yellow Jackets will share the festival's main stage for a concert on Saturday, July 16th at 8 p.m. at Oregon State University's Lower Campus. The musical headliner for Friday, July 16th will be the Young Dubliners, an American band known for its mixture of rock and traditional Irish music. McFerrin is probably best known for his 1988 hit, Don't Worry, Be Happy, but in the years since his hit, he's consistently stretched the boundaries of vocal music and has worked with a variety of jazz and classical musicians. This annual celebration of art and science will be entering its 23rd year and will span three days, July 15th to the 17th. Tickets for the festival go on sale beginning May 1st at the festival's website, davincidays.org. Advanced tickets cost $15 for the full festival and $10 for a single day. So make sure to check out this great summer event. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more music news after the break. Welcome to Locals Live on KBVR Channel 26 or KBVRTV.com. We have a pretty interesting show tonight. is really happening right now. G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. L-U-V love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. I got no pulse for losing him. Sorry, he's in big fit. Shock him. Drives it real all the time. He just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. You just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. He'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. 
Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Hey, what's up, guys? We are the Nautics, and we're here at the Women's Building at Oregon State University shooting our new music video for Do You Want the Girl? Check out behind the scenes. My name is Maggie, and I've been helping Evan and Mark shoot the music video for the Nautics, uh, Do You Want the Girl? Uh, so the music video um, is about a guy trying to rob a museum, and um, a beautiful woman is one step ahead of him in stealing um, a valuable artifact. Well, as always, working with Evan, Mark, and the Nautics has been a great experience. Um, today we're shooting in the women's building. Uh, yesterday we shot in the studio, the concert scene, and today is the high scene. Um, and I am mostly a grip on set um, and keeping the shot list and taking photos and basically doing what Evan and Mark told me to do. I'm Devin Shepard, and I'm a music major in my fourth year here at Oregon State. I play the part of a thief, and I'm stealing a diamond from a museum, and I'm always one step ahead of the guy who is also trying to steal it, so. It's been a really great experience. It's been really fun. Everyone's really nice and helpful, and it's just been a really great experience. I love it a lot. Uh, hey, my name is Rowan Russell. I'm playing Milo, the diamond thief. Uh, well, Milo steals diamonds, which is a pretty po profitable business. Uh, and he's, he's definitely a, a bit less cool than he thinks he is. I mean, he wears his sunglasses at night. Yeah, go figure. But, uh, but it's cool because he sort of just is a... Um, He's like a serious parody of you know the the diamond thief and and uh, while he's kind of goofy and uh, silly, he's also very serious. So it ends up coming out pretty cool. Well, I mean, this is my first music video, first uh, experience working with the Nautics uh, and Evan. But I remember when he approached me about doing the project, uh, and I watched some of his uh, stuff. I was on board because I'd actually competed against him in a campus movie fest uh, a couple years back and I remember his films from back then so yeah like when I got the opportunity I was ready to go and it's been fun I mean he's got a plan everyone working on this project has been really cool and uh, we've had a great time today hey guys thanks for watching our behind-the-scenes footage of the Nautics newest music video do you want the girl be sure to look for the premiere in the weeks to come, only on Music Fusion Fridays. Hey, where are you going with my jewel? What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Good. 
it's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. There we go. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We're gonna beat them and bust them. Beat them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest beat impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. You believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back. I know you missed us. Last Friday, a little piece of great musical history was lost when the offices and recording studios of Malico Records was destroyed when a tornado hit Jackson, Mississippi. Malico Records has recorded and released albums for dozens of soul and blues legends and is regarded as America's top African-American blues gospel soul label. According to Oregon Music News, of the three buildings in the compound, one was completely destroyed, with the other two having more than half their structure destroyed. Label co-founder Wolf Stevenson and about 15 other employees were inside the buildings when the storm hit, but thankfully all were unharmed. Sadly, the room that housed the master tapes from decades of great musicians like ZZ Hill, Little Milton, and Bobby Blue Bland was demolished. It was just three years ago that this month that Malico Records was honored with an official marker recognizing it as a Jackson landmark along the Mississippi Blues Trail. The company was founded in 1962 and located on Northside Drive in 1967, and the owners are now wondering if and how they can rebuild after 44 years have gone by. Due to the extensive damage of the tornadoes that ripped through Mississippi last week, a state of emergency was issued for 14 counties in the state. Here's to hoping that the damages can be mostly repaired and that the legend of Malico Records will live on. The 2011 Pulitzer Prize for Music was awarded to Cho Long for his opera Madam Whitesnake. According to James Bash of Oregon Music News, it premiered early last year by Opera Boston at the Cutler Majestic Theater. This deeply expressive opera draws on a Chinese folktale to blend together the musical traditions of the East and the West. Madam White Snake, a classical transformation myth, is the story of a powerful white snake demon who transforms into a beautiful woman so she may experience love. After getting married to her true love, disaster strikes when Abbott realizes she is not human. She is then betrayed by her husband and tragically transformed back into a snake. A powerful metaphor for each individual's struggle to dream, the myth has spoken deeply to all who have dared to dream. The deadly white snake demon gives up her immortal existence to assume human form in the pursuit of the most human of all emotions, love. She holds love dearly for one moment, and then love is lost forever. Through the centuries, this simple myth has become an icon in the hearts and minds of the Chinese people. The question of what it means to be truly human is always timely and each generation answers this question in its own voice. For bringing such touching work to the States, Long definitely deserves to win this year's Pulitzer Prize. Well that's all the music news we have for you today, but make sure you stay tuned for more music videos. See you next week!